Standing on a stage like this is one type of challenge. But my normal type of challenge involves a lot more sweat, enormous amounts of sugar, and sometimes toenails that aren't where you want them to be. Do you remember the feeling you had as a kid when everything felt possible and you dreamt about becoming something big when you grew up? I never had that feeling as a kid. It took 20 a year, 28 years to find it. I grew up in a safe home and I learned a lot of skills from my parents. Pushing limits was not one of them. But when I was 25, um, I questioned my identity because I had just finished my studies, so I was no longer a student, but I struggled to get my first real job. But I wanted to have something to do, so I started running. First a little, then a bit more, and then even more. And after a while, I set the goal to run a marathon. A marathon for me had always been something that extraordinary people did. Nothing for an ordinary guy like me. But I signed up, and there I was on the start line, together with thousands of others. People were sharing. I felt good, and I started. And the race went well, until halfway, where I collapsed. I have faint memories of two people dragging me into a medical tent. And my only thought was that I didn't want to quit. But continuing wasn't an option. And eventually my thoughts cleared, and I lay there, and I realized that I had failed. And since running was part of my new identity, I hadn't only failed, but I was a failure. My thoughts cleared, and it was like I heard two voices in my head. One of them told me to give up running, and go back to living a comfortable life. And the other one told me to stand up again, learn from this failure, and decide to try again. It took a while, but I eventually listened to that second voice. And a few months later, I heard about something called the Iron Man. And in an, in an Ironman, you end the race by running a marathon. But before you're allowed to run, you need to swim four kilometers in an open ocean, and you need to bike 180 kilometers. Can you imagine how that feels? I couldn't. For me, that was completely impossible. But somehow, I couldn't get the thought out of my head. It was scary and exciting at the same time. And once I had signed up, it was no longer a question about if, but about how. And almost a year later, at the age of 28, there I was, in the water, together with a few hundred others. It was a long and painful day. It hurt a lot but I felt more alive than ever. And a few kilometers from the finish line, I realized that I would do it. And then I started to cry, because I was about to do the impossible. When I got to the finish line, which I did eventually, I found out that my mother had also been crying all day, because she thought I would die. The only thing that died that day was my paradigm of what was possible. And after the finish line, I met my wife, and I told her, never again. I'm never doing this again. It's way too painful. She too told me the same when we got our son eight years ago. Never again. And now we have three children, and I've done nine more Ironman races. So I guess it's a human defense mechanism to forget the pain, 
and remember the good. Eventually, I became quite good at this Iron Man thing, and people came asking me for advice. And uh, I noticed that it wasn't only me that got happier from challenging myself. That was actually a universal thing that I saw in the other people I coached as well. And that was a big lesson for me, because I had learned from the first failure that failure can be a great motivator. And I also felt inclined to challenge myself, and I felt, ha felt happy when I did it. And I noticed that there were more people like myself. When I was 14, looking back at that time, I realized that two things happened when I was 14 that changed my life for the better. I met my first girlfriend, and I won my first competition. Meeting my first girlfriend, one of the most important things for me was to have a fresh breath. You know why? <laughs> yes, you know why. So I went, to went around with a chewing gum pack in my pockets all day long. And my favorite type of competition was the one we wrote slogans for brands. You know, you sent them in, you could win, but you didn't have to be in the spotlight. Because I was really shy as a child. I didn't want to be in the spotlight, but I liked the competing thing. One day, phone rang at my parents' house, and I realized that I had won. I had won a slogan competition with one of the chewing gum brands. And the prize was a climbing course in a mountain with a climbing instructor. And I can still remember the fear in my stomach because I got scared. I'd never climbed mountains before. I wanted to say no, but at the same time, it felt strange to say no when I had finally won something. So I asked for a day to think. And the next day, the phone rang again. I picked it up. And I heard myself say, yes, rising to the challenge. And I didn't die. I didn't fall off the cliff. And I survived. And I learned that day that if you say yes when there's a challenge in front of you, you grow and you learn new things. And you know what? The chewing gum trick, it worked. The wife I met, the girl I met, is now my wife, Sarah, and we are together 24 years later with three beautiful children. <laughs> <clears throat> Saying yes to challenges has, during the last 10 years, put me through quite a lot of scary and painful situations. Like saying yes to breaking a world record together with my friend David, uh, running further than anyone else during 12 hours on a treadmill. We also raised money for children with cancer to make it more meaningful. Or another one, a few months after this, I found out that there was a race in Norway called the Norseman. That was said to be the toughest triathlon in the world, and I signed up. In the Norseman, you're dropped off at 5 a.m. in the morning from a ferry, in a cold Norwegian fjord, about 12 degrees Celsius in the water. And then you're supposed to get back to shore, four kilometers away. The only thing you have to aim for is a fire on shore. And I was so cold that day. I've never been so cold in my whole life. But somehow I got through the swim, got up on shore. And luckily in this race, you're allowed to have a support crew. And I had the best support crew in the world, my wife. And she helped me get the wetsuit off, because I couldn't do it myself, to get me ready for the bike. The bike, which is uh, 180 kilometers again, but this time over four mountaintops. Ending back at sea level, and then it's time to run a marathon. This marathon starts at sea level, but it ends on a mountaintop at 1,800 meters. And uh, I wasn't alone in the mountain that day, obviously. And eventually, uh, we reached the summit together, me and my wife, in the fog. People often ask me why. You may do the same. At first, 
I didn't know. I just liked running, so I did more of what I liked. That was my initial reasoning. But now I know more. Because the thing I realized was that having a challenge, having a goal, having a tough goal, it gave me motivation and it made me happier. And we know that challenges and goals make us stronger. I mean, the Stoics, they knew that 2,000 years ago, so that's nothing new. But having a goal also makes us happier. And that is one of the realizations I had. And it turns out that research on happiness by Sonia Libomirsky, uh, who works at the University of California, actually shows that one of the keys to happiness is to set a goal and work towards something. So there is more. I found out through experience, by looking through happiness research, I found that it's actually proven, which explains it to me. Today, more and more people are sad, depressed. They take pills to cover up their feelings. In some cases, they kill themselves. And I believe we need, as human beings, to have a mission. We need to have a purpose to go up in the morning and work towards something. We need challenges and we need goals to be happy. And we are almost like birds in a nest. You know a young bird that jumps over the edge even before it knows whether it can fly? Only to realize that it can fly. So what is your nest that you need to jump out of to find out that you can fly? Last year, I stood on the start line of a race in Bornholm, an island in the Baltic Sea. The distance, 100 miles of running, 100 American miles, 160 kilometers. But the distance was only one of the challenges. We were also supposed to climb 6,600 vertical meters during the race while running four marathons. I started the race together with a few other crazy people um, and got five hours into the race, had covered the marathon. Then I stepped on a stone and sprained my ankle. And I sat down. And I realized that there is no way I can finish this. I had three marathons to go and a Mont Blanc to climb. But somehow I decided at least to get out of the forest to at least get to the next aid station. So I wrapped up my foot, I stood up again, and I limped forward. And then I started to think back on who am I? Why am I doing this? And I realized that my new role, my new identity as a father, as a coach, and as a role model for people around, it didn't fit with quitting. If I tell others not to quit, then I can't quit myself when there is an obstacle. Because a race like this, it's like life. Life throws obstacles at us all the time. And we have two options. Either we quit or take an easy road, or we push through the challenges. But I needed some mental energy limping there in the forest, so I picked up my phone and I called my family. My family, they were home in the sofa enjoying a Friday night dinner. And it felt like I was on another planet. But speaking to my children, I made up my mind that I would do whatever it took to get to the finish line. And it was painful, it wasn't pretty, but after 30 hours, I reached the finish line. Completely broken, but more proud than ever. Because it is in times where things don't go perfect, that we need to take out the best of ourselves. 
That's when it shows who we really are. That's why I'm most proud of this race, where things went wrong. Michelangelo, he saw an angel in the marble when it was just a piece of stone. Even before he started to carve, he saw potential in this piece of stone. And I see potential in people. That's why I like this quote. Sometimes even before people see it in themselves. Because I believe we are created to do so much more than we think. It requires courage and it requires hard work. But we can do much more than we think. So what is your Iron Man? What is the thing that you consider impossible, but you can't get it off your mind? And what would it take for you to take that first step? And what would the first step be? I will continue to push my limits and hopefully by doing so inspire you to do the same. Because I believe that once we have a challenge or goal in front of us, it leaves us with no other option than to improve and move forward and to become the best version of ourselves that we can be. And also, having a challenge makes us happier. We know that now, right? So what's your challenge? Thank you.